It's the end of the day, so I'll promise to keep it on time. I, David and I actually know each other, so it is a small world. Uh, I went to ASU. Uh, I don't know why I was invited to such a great institution, but I'm thrilled to be here. I rarely get invited back, so that is the warning that you know. <laughs> and uh, two forward-looking statements, unlike the previous speaker. Everything I say is forward-thinking. And Thrive works. The, um, <laughs> the, I never write jokes. I wait till the person before. Um, so we're, we're in this era of social leverage over financial leverage, where guys like me can be out here in front of you talking about my career. And I'm really excited. I own and operate two millennials myself. But I'm really, <laughs> I, one of them's here. My son is here, and my, and my nephew is here. We're going to go to a bas uh, basketball game tonight. The, um, but I'm excited about millennials. You know, I'm not excited that I'm paying for them at the moment at college age, but I really am excited. And we hear a lot of negativity about millennials, but I'm super optimistic that the best investors in the world are in their teens and in their 20s. And I write this popular blog, I guess. Uh, it's about investing for profit and joy. So what do I believe? I think you have to know how I believe in order for you to tune out or tune in here. And so I would ask you to just go along and leave the bad comments for Twitter later. The, everyone can learn to invest, OK? And people should start young. The markets are a language. You know, if I was up here, one of these kids here, were, students were pitching uh, how to teach Chinese on an app in three weeks, the VCs would give you a billion dollar valuation, $100 million, $20 million, whatever it is, a big valuation. But no entrepreneurs are up here telling you how they're going to learn to speak the language of the markets, both fundamentally and behaviorally. And believe me, it's a big opportunity. <clears throat> Next thing is the stock market is rigged. If you don't believe that, uh, you are one of the people being fooled. The, uh, and I hear it all day on stock tweets that the market is rigged. Guess what? Live with it. There's still opportunity to make money, and I'll show you later. And we live in this world today where robots, robots, robots. Uh, I believe there's no such thing as passive investing. Don't get caught in this latest bubble. Next, are you a pundit or a professional? This is something that someone shared on StockTwits. He's a great writer, great thinker. Uh, I live my life trying to be a professional. Uh, the last generation is built on pundits in the financial industry. And the pundit, as we see all day on TV, sells fear and greed. The professional makes a living helping to control these emotions. The pundit reads the news and listens to financial TV. The professional reads books and listens to podcasts. Anyways, the pundit has an answer for every question. We see it every day. The, professor, the professional is often saying, I don't know, on and on. And that's how I try and teach people to behave, to act on our social network stock twits. <clears throat> so who am I? What do I do? Uh, born in Toronto, uh, moved to Arizona to go to SU. I live in Coronado, San Diego, and travel the world speaking and running stock twits. <clears throat> two kids, two dogs, one wife. Um, she's in Vietnam, uh, but she says she's coming back. The, uh, <laughs> on WhatsApp, just just text, just WhatsApp. She's I can follow her on WhatsApp. And what do I do? Uh, I do a few things. Right now, my main business is a fund called Social Leverage. We're in, heading into Fund 3 been with my partners for a very long time. And again, in 2007, I saw this end of financial, this era of financial leverage coming to an end. Financial leverage is a beautiful thing, but it's a tactic, not a strategy. And it had been run as a strategy for way too long. And you see, as that era ended, the boom in social was beginning. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. WeChat, Weibo, we'll talk about that a little later in these trends. And so we've invested in over 100 startups, some big ones. These are some of them, not all the big ones. Buddy Media is one of the largest New York exits, bought by Salesforce for 800 million. These, and we were angel investors in all of these. Uh, our first Cornell graduate, 
uh, Produce Pay, which just raised a large Series A. Pablo, great kid. <clears throat> Robinhood, which is probably the fastest growing financial app in history, at least the fastest growing brokerage. <clears throat> so we invest in startups, seed investors. And we live, we eat, live what we eat, we eat food, what we, I don't know. We definitely love investing early. Uh, there's me, heavier days before Thrive. Um, <laughs> this, uh, this is one of the great, it's one of the great, I should get advisor shares if Thrive is here. Uh, so this is one of the great thrills of my life. I'm not in the media business. I ran a hedge fund for 18 years. Um, but I was fed up with one-way communications. This is back in the, just before the end of financial levers, and I had this idea to create a show on YouTube. I wanted to create CNBC on YouTube. And uh, I had met Fred Wilson earlier, and I called Fred Wilson, and I said, I'm gonna put CNBC on YouTube, and Fred had invested in uh, street.com back in the day. And Fred's a big media entrepreneur here in town. And he backed me personally and introduced me to a few people, and for 600 grand, we started Wall Strip, which was a three-minute show a day on YouTube and uh, became pretty popular pretty fast, and CBS acquired it six months later. <clears throat> a very short career. I was like the Clarence Beaks of CBS, but CBS acquired it, and um, we were the first show ever acquired, first video show ever acquired in this generation by a major network. And so my work wasn't really done. You know, it was the beginning. You know, I wanted to create CNBC on YouTube, but my work wasn't done. <clears throat> so when I saw Twitter, I, said, I thought Twitter would be great as a uh, financial product, people sharing ideas. And so eight years ago when I left CBS, I started a company called Stock Twist, which fast forward today is the largest social network for traders and investors and growing really fast. <clears throat> my strategy that I share every day on my blog, um, if you're gonna invest, and I teach this to everybody is, you don't wanna invest to beat the S&P, or to just match the S&P, which I don't get. You invest to trounce the markets. I'm looking for Amazons. I'm not just looking to find them, because that's easy. I'm looking to hold them, okay? Focus on small data. You'll hear a lot of people in my industry talk about big data, I have no idea what it means, okay? <laughs> no one does. I focus on small data. If I, take, if I ask you the price of Facebook today, we all know the price, that 120 or whatever. <clears throat> That is one of the most, that's the biggest piece of data out there in the world, financial data, because it's accumulation of so many endpoints and it's a final point that we all trust. But in the end, that's small data. So I like to think of the world less complicated in the terms of, I try and focus as everything as small data. <clears throat> trend following, I am a trend follower. Get into that in a few minutes. Next thing is, the faster you start building your network, the better. Doesn't matter how old you are, start building the network. <clears throat> and then selling is cool. I joke about it all the time. I sell too early. No big deal, everybody. Selling is part of our business. <clears throat> this is what we're after. We all could own it. Amazon. The green line is the returns. The red line is CNBC screaming in 2001 to sell, 2006 to sell, 2009 to sell. This company has more drawdowns. That's too dirty, but they've had a lot of drawdowns. The, and that's what we're, that, I mean, why invest if we're not looking for Amazons? <clears throat> but you can see how, how much pain that causes on the way to those, much gain, to those gains, okay? But that's what we're looking for. The shark, great to watch shark shows. I can watch shark shows all day. These little pilot fish get no love, none. Those pilot fish live one hell of a life, free food, Nobody messes with them. Um, they can talk smack to other fish. Nothing can affect the pilot fish. Guess what? It's okay to be a pilot fish in the investing world. Let Goldman be Goldman. Let the market be rigged. There is lots of opportunity. No one at Goldman had you holding Amazon this much time. <clears throat> the Peloton, a very important scientific, social, proven, way to go faster. The Tour de France is an impossible race if it weren't for the Peloton. The Peloton pulls everybody forward. Yes, someone wins the race, of course, and everybody blood dopes, but the fact is the Peloton works. It pulls you faster as a group, these small groups working together. 
And that's how I think about investing, okay? And that's why groups are smart. You know, they say the crowd, follow the crowd, et cetera. If you are in the right crowd, you make money. <clears throat> then very important for startups and investors. Has anybody, has anybody played the game Risk? One of the great games of all time, especially in the board format. You could never, and it's proving out in real life, win the game from Europe. If you start in Europe, you're a sucker. <laughs> um, and it's, the world is flat. Like, the world is round. Well, Donald Trump will prove that the world is flat. But <laughs> the, the world is round to 75% of us. But the world of startups and investing is flat. You are going to win the game by starting in a corner. Facebook started out as a status app. Snapchat was a fake thing. LinkedIn was a network builder. Stock to it's just talking about stocks. You start in a corner. You build, you polish. You do one thing great. We've seen companies do this all the time. Twitter's now suffering from it, boiling the ocean, going broad and not owning deep. And this next generation of companies is really going to focus on deep. But you start and you move your armies forward. And that, the board game of risk is an underappreciated game. <clears throat> So what's next? My world, the market's shrinking. We hear it all day. Uh, less IPOs, ETF, a ruling, stock buybacks are eating up supply. But I see it every day. Young people on stock to it's young people stopping me in the street. I'm speaking all over the country. They want to trade and invest. <clears throat> on stock to it's, this is our dashboard, our new dashboard. This is a social dashboard of what every of the couple hundred thousand of people today logged in talking about. <clears throat> This is our mobile app, fast growing. <clears throat> Very simple trending and watch list and ability to chat with other investors. And now with the use of Robinhood's API, you can swipe right there and buy and sell shares without StockTwits even being a broker dealer. And this is Robinhood, which we are angel investors in and just raised 60 million uh, last year. Um, and like I said, the fastest growing brokerage. Anybody heard of Robinhood or using it? That's amazing for a company with no marketing. And the rest of you should download StockTwits and Robinhood and try it out. The ability to buy one share. Soon the ability, I think, in the world is the stuff that I'm working on is to buy fractional shares. We'll talk about that if we have time. <clears throat> and then AngelList. Anybody heard of AngelList? Okay, this is basically Facebook of investing of, for private investors. A company that I saw in 2010 and was lucky enough to, Naval, let me angel invest. But this is the new NASDAQ. And so on AngelList, you can deploy capital quickly across categories, whether they be drones or social investing or uh, curing uh, drunkenness. The, the market opportunity, trust me, it's huge for millennials. There's 80 million of them. They're going to inherit 30 trillion. That's why everybody's starting robos. They won't tell you the real reason, but that's the real reason. Everybody's trying to get a piece of the 30 trillion, however they can do it. 75% including my son, have not started to save. 72% <laughs> don't trust the advisors. That's because those advisors have so much hair coming out of their ears, it's creepy. They're 80 years old. 50% want a tech solution. 53% lack funds. These are the biggest market trends. Mood over fundamentals. I'll talk about it quickly. Passive versus active and vanilla investing, shrinking public markets, which we talked about in the gig economy. And this is actually a title of a book I just found called The Grumpy Millennial. Not true. Again, another lie about millennials. They're optimistic. They want to try stuff. <clears throat> Here is the biggest trend I've ever seen. Passive money over active money. You're seeing it every day. Hedge funds suck. They cheat. They steal. Put your money in a robo. Uh, here's forecasts that the global wealth management industry will create one trillion in revenue, yet I never see a pitch that someone wants to be a financial advisor. Teach your kid the business. Get them to manage your money. Get them to manage 500 bucks. If it's your grandkid, put some money in a Robin Hood account. <clears throat> I talked about mood over fundamentals, quickly. Kids are bananas for trading mood. They're all holding hands on, on Facebook and Twitter. Everybody's talking to everybody. Something happened a couple months ago or a month ago that the, these crazy volatility products trade more than some S&P stocks. People are betting on what's going to happen tomorrow on the mood, whether we like it or not. 
So mood over fundamentals, it's inevitable. It will skew back, of course, because fundamentals matter as much as ever. It's just mood really matters now. <clears throat> Tech, people talk about a bubble. We're not anywhere close. You see the white line in 2001, that was a bubble. Now tech is invading everything, the white line, and still not even half uh, where it was in, relatively in, in 2000. <clears throat> Largest US companies, we've probably seen this just in 2006, Exxon, GE, Microsoft, Shitty Bank, Bank of America. Today, <laughs> Apple, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, no Shitty Bank. Still around, not even a top 50. Um, soon you'll see Tencent in there and Alibaba. And Berkshire Hathaway is there buying tech stocks now. He's buying Apple, he'll probably buy Cisco, he'll buy, probably buy a lot more tech stocks. So it'll be top 10 companies, it'll be tech. Here's the banking sector relative to the S&P, okay? Do not be a banker. So be a financial advisor, get your kids, think about being a, do not be a banker, that was the industry. Okay, you waited around this long, some ideas. I always, people are always looking for the next Amazon. I always question people to say, yes, but is Amazon the next Amazon? I'll get into that for a second. Robots, they're coming, they're here. Uh, they're not fit for finance. They're fit for AI, but they're not to my, my fit. They shouldn't be managing your money. Um, but Google, a stock that I've been talking about for a couple of years, also iRobot, which is on fire right now, so don't buy it tomorrow, but that's a company that I love and been talking about. Payments, I own PayPal, I own Visa, I own MasterCard. Google can't beat them. They are the railroads of the next generation. 100 years from now, Visa and MasterCard will be here. You see dips, you buy them. Fashology is something I've been talking about for 10 years. It's a combination of fashion and technology, Lulu, Nike, Under Armour. They're all getting killed right now. I've been buying those. And then, of course, punch a banker, hug a engineer. It's a saying that I've had for a while. Generally, I like to punch both. Uh, engineers are difficult, but they're still more useful than a banker. <laughs> Weed, I don't smoke it. Uh, Max, I don't smoke. Um, in 1969, 12% of Americans were in favor of marijuana legalization. Today, 57% support legalization. If you don't smoke it, own it. Um, <laughs> stash it, it's like Bitcoin, but green. The product that I'm working on, 30 seconds, is a company called Sparkfin. I believe in these eight to 80 products, okay? Any nincompoop can understand this. If an eight-year-old's using the product and an 80-year-old's using the product, don't get fancy, that's working. You see 20% dips in eight to 80 products, you buy the stocks. Any kid can do this. Every kid will be building their own ETFs and sharing them socially, that's my bet. Um, <clears throat> finally, what I read, no CNBC people. Stop it. You're all guilty. Josh Brown's a good friend of mine, the only good person on CNBC. It's crap product. Stop with the news. Twitter, use it, but use it for links and ideas. Follow smart people. Stock Twitch, download it, try it, say hello. VC blogs, you know, the first two that I ever read, still read them every morning. Brad Feld, Fred Wilson, <clears throat> Ben Thompson, pay the 100 bucks a year. He's a friend of mine, lives in Singapore, the best doesn't, he's not thinking about stocks, but he's thinking about the biggest companies in the world and strategically amazing read every morning. Uh, probably the most under 50,000 paid subscribers, but still early. And then a couple of technical people that I read, uh, which I think is really important. I think uh, charts are important, maybe not technical, but charts are really important. They are a behavioral snapshot of how people are thinking in the moment. That's it. I am uh, Howard Lindzen. I appreciate your time, and it's easy to find me on the webs. <laughs>